Now I haven't shown you what I've been doing, but this is the brake master cylinder. And I'm sorry that my table here is kind of a mess, but one of the things I did, I've never rebuilt a front brake master cylinder, but I've been watching like YouTube videos. So if you can imagine, I've already removed the brake lever. So the brake lever is here on this bolt and it pushes this thing in. And I have removed the rubber <clears throat> that's um, on the outside here. It's like a dust seal. Um, now, to get this out, you have to get something, something like this, or those clips that you can push in. It's, um, it's a circlip. And the, it's got like two little holes. And I have, um, overnight, I actually used penetrating fluid because this is such a pain in the ass. And it's not working uh, well because What's happening is that as I'm um, uh, braking, no fluid is coming out of here. And I don't want to buy a new one, so I am trying to be careful with this. So one part is already out. Mm. Oh, I got it out. Oh, look at that. I can't believe it. So here's the piston, and whoa, look at this. I've actually never done this on a bike. So this is completely new and it's full of crud. I mean, this is why it wasn't breaking at all. Jesus. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is, it's just like, it's what you'd expect. I mean, like even the circlip. So this is the circlip that's in there. And you notice there's like two little tiny holes and you put your, thing through here and you try and like push it in and up. Up is all over here. So I need to order a rebuild kit for the brake master cylinder and but I'm going to clean up all of this. But it is just uh, absolutely just filthy. Look at this. I mean if I rotate it you'll see all that gunk. This should be fluid. You know it should be brake fluid not uh, gel. There's a spring. The spring seems to be okay. I don't know. Um, but we're going to be cleaning all of this up. And I mean, this is actually like hard on here. It's, uh, I don't know if it's easy to tell on video, but it should not be chunks at all. It should be a fluid. So one of the things I did is I removed the spark plugs. Um, and then I put some oil inside the spark plug tubes and now I put it in the top gear on the drive and I wanted to see if the pistons were moving. This was a great uh, suggestion by Gilbert from the YouTube channel and thanks a lot. I really appreciate that because now I'm going to see if the wheel rotates. You can see it's pretty tough but it will rotate so there we go. And I hear the, um, the engine and the, the pistons going up. This is a really small bike. You know, the wheels are absolutely tiny. You can see here, there's a bolt here, but this one has been broken off. And this holds the fender on here. I am going to see if I can remove it, but I don't really see a way to get this out. It's pretty interesting, these old fuses. There's a plastic cover. And you don't have to use any bolts to remove, but look at the fuses there. One, two, three, four. And there are these old school fuses. They're not the inlines anymore. So this is the head. You know, the uh, clutch is also, I might have to get a new cable. Everything about this is just, um, it just needs a lot of um, TLC. I don't know if I'll be able to get a new cable. Even this is extremely difficult to get. So. I am looking at various things, but I'm going to, I do like this bike a lot. I, it kind of fits me well if I can get it to work. So right here, this is your radiator fluid and it's got a very tiny radiator. Um, it is kind of, it was very difficult to get out and luckily there was fluid in here. The bottle, it was pretty empty. And one of the things I really hate about these bikes is that, um, I, you know, I filled it. It's, sometimes they put, even in the shadow, what I noticed is that they put the bottle um, opener so close to, 
tubes and stuff. It's hard to get your hand in there to twist it. But in, overall, this is a very well designed bike from what I've seen. The shocks, I've seen better days. I mean, they are rusty, but I'm not going to be able to see if they're in good shape. I think I was able to look on Amazon and they do make shocks that should fit in here and they have the reservoir. So that'll be an upgrade if I want to. But before I start buying lots of stuff for this bike, I don't want to have this kind of big investment and then realize that the engine doesn't work. So I am going to wait for everything because the most important thing, at least for me, is getting the engine going. If I can get the engine and the transmission moving, then I think I'll be happy. You know, another interesting thing that I'm going to be doing in a future video is that these bikes have valve adjustment covers here, two bolts. You don't have to remove this at all. So hopefully I'll be able to kind of look in there, but I've been neglecting to do that for now. What I'm missing is bolts. This is actually unattached. So I wonder why this is unattached, but that means that if the bike works, the engine works, I will, you know, work on this a little bit more. I'm also going to replace the light with an LED just because, you know, these lights are not very good from the factory. But I much prefer this uh, VF over the VT. The VT, oh, FT. The FT has got a single cylinder and then a shaft uh, chain drive. This one's got a shaft drive. And I think that's the reason I really like that. It needs a lot of work and I am really hoping that I can get this thing, you know, moving. But So with this uh, brake pad, you know, the rotor is actually in decent shape, but I wonder if I could get like another brake caliper to fit here, but that's a lot more hard work. I wish I had more parts available to me. Uh, the other alternative is just to replace the front suspension with another bikes and then another bikes front wheels, but I don't, I definitely don't want to do that. I want to keep it as stock as much as possible. The only thing that I would do to make it a little bit less stock is brake calipers from another bike. I wish like a EX 250's front um, calipers would fit, but um, I'm very unsure if it'll fit. Uh, I guess I would have to measure this and do a, a lot of research. Um, tires are also in really bad shape. I just received my new carb guy, so let's go ahead and open this up. It actually arrived yesterday and I never even realized it. So I bought this on eBay. Pull this out. There we go. It's pretty well packed. And here we go. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it looks very clean. Let's see if these move. Yeah, nice. Looks nice and smooth. Doesn't move that well, but uh, I think that's fine. Yeah, that's actually good. Let me see if I can... Yeah, the uh, car actually looks like in very, very good shape. Oh yeah, it moves well. This goes in here like that and then the cable for the choke goes in here. This is kind of exciting. I got the carb and I am ready to put it on the bike after I look over the needles. I think it should actually be very clean. Um, I think they did a good job cleaning this. So I think the only thing that I worry about is this, the choke plunger because I had such a hard time getting the other one out but I'm going to just look it over. Uh, I am missing a fuel line here that I'm going to, I need to get a new one anyway. And I might put a fuel filter on it. I don't think there's a fuel filter coming off the gas tank at all. So I kind of want to do that as well. So I think by this weekend, guys, I should be able to push that start button on the bike and see if it'll run. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Stuck here, the cops won't bother me.